Hi everyone. Welcome to our virtual story time here at Michigan City Public Library. My name is Mr. Dave and joining me today are Mr. Jonathan. Hi everyone. Welcome to story time. I'm really happy to be here with you. And Ms. Becky. And Ms. Dana. Hello, I'm Ms. Dana. Before we start the stories today, I thought we could shake our hands up. Shake our hands up. Wiggle your fingers around. Shake them out to the side. Shake them out in front of you. Okay, is everybody ready? I have 10 little fingers and they all belong to me. I can make them do things. What would you like to see? I can shut them tight. I can open them wide. I can put them together. I can make them hide. I can make them fly high. I can make them fly low. I can fold them like this and hold them just so. Right, good job everybody. Today I'm reading The Grumble Troll by April Kind. I'm reading it with permission of Schiffer Kids Publishing. Right behind the forest, first a few steps straight ahead, then once to the left and twice to the right, there lives a little troll. What a good time he is having. Colorful flowers are blooming in the green meadow, the brook splashes along merrily. The sun warms his fur. What a marvelous life. Most of the time, anyway. One morning, the little troll says to no one in particular, Today, I want to build myself a little cottage. He already knows exactly what it should look like. A cottage where he can play and hide himself away and rest when he's tired. The little troll has everything he needs to build it. But it's not working. Every time he tries, the whole thing keeps falling down. There is a very loud rumbling in the little troll's tummy. No, 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 that's not the way it's supposed to be. Now I don't want a cottage anymore, grumbles the little troll. I want to eat an apple. He shakes the branches, but not a single apple falls down. He shakes it harder. Nothing happens. But I want it, I want it, I want it, cries the troll, so angrily that the tree trembles and the worms in the apples get hiccups. Then just keep your apple, scolds the little troll. And he stomps down to the brook. He wants to make some little boats and set them afloat. He likes doing that. But today, they all sink. Why are they doing that? They're not supposed to do that. No, they're not supposed to do that. The troll rages and howls so much it makes waves in the water in the brook. And the fish are so scared they forgot how to swim. Everything is horrible here. I'm going somewhere else, the little troll says in a huff. And because he doesn't know where this somewhere else is, he wants to look for somewhere else he has never been before. If only this huge rock would stop blocking his way. Could you please move aside, asked the troll, but the rock didn't move. Go away, cries the troll, but the rock doesn't move. Just roll away, you dummy, roars the troll, so loud that the rock almost starts to wobble, but only almost. Then the little troll 
kicks it with all his might. So hard his claws hurt and he almost starts to cry. That makes the troll even angrier as if there's a thunderstorm living inside him with lightning shooting out of the sky, with thunder rumbling tremendously. Yes, that's just how he feels right now. Like a troll that grumbles, a real grumble troll. In the evening, as it's getting dark, the little troll is still grumbling. He's so angry he can't fall asleep. Don't make such a fuss, calls the hedgehog. Just lie down already, complains the mouse. You're being really annoying, groans the bird. This makes Grumble Troll angry, very, very angry. And boldly, he won't lie down, especially not now. Tonight, he's going to sleep sitting up. Now that's what you get, he grumbles. But sleeping sitting up isn't comfortable at all. The Grumble Troll notices this the next morning. Ouch, he mutters and rubs his back. And his legs have fallen asleep, that too. What happened, asks the rabbit. Nothing, rolls the grumble troll. Should we blow on it, asks the mouse. No, roars the grumble troll. He stamps away angrily, first with one foot and then with the other, back and forth, back and forth. No, 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 no. Now that's enough, says the hedgehog, and sticks his quills up. You are driving us up the wall, calls the bird and puffs his feathers. Enough is enough, calls the mouse. We're leaving. I don't care, snarls the grumble troll. He roams around a bit, sometimes here, sometimes there. How quiet things are suddenly. Everyone is gone. Nobody is talking. Nobody is laughing. It's so quiet he can even hear the grass growing. It is boring. I'm bored to tears, groans the grumble troll. What are his friends doing right now? They must be having fun, even without him. The little grumble troll swallows. Did he grumble them away forever? He folds up a boat again and writes something on it. Then he carefully puts it in the brook. Yes, it floats. It floats right up to his friends. On the boat is written, sorry. Sorry, says the little grumble troll. Accepted, says the rabbit. It's okay, says the bird. Do you want to play, says the mouse. What a question. Sure, of course. Just behind the forest, first a few steps straight ahead, then once to the left and twice to the right, Little Grumble Troll lives with his friends. They play together, they dance, and they sing, and sometimes they also build things until the moon puts out the sun and the first stars are waning from the sky. And that's the Grumble Troll. One, two, three, four, five. Where's the Dragon by Leo Timmers, read with permission by Gecko Press. The brave king's scared to go to bed. A nightmare dragon fills his head. He sends his knights, one, two, and three. Save the realm, but mainly me. Knight one whispers to knight two, I've never seen a dragon, have you? Knight two says, no. The king told me that they make the forest creatures flee. Knight one says, well, the king confided, their spikes are thick and double-sided. Ha ha, ho ho, says small knight three. A bed of carrots won't hurt me. Knight two says, well, the king alleged their teeth aren't used for fruit and veg. Ha ha ho ho, says small knight three. Sleepy beaks don't bother me. Knight one says, well, the king declared, their necks are long, their nostrils flared. Ha ha ho ho, 
says small knight three. A roosting post can't rattle me. Knight two says, well, the king forewarned, their tails stabbed the dark like thorns. Ha ha, ho ho, says small knight three. These snoring sentries don't scare me. Knight one says, well, the king did stress, their flaming, frying, boiling, scalding, sizzling, smelly breath. Knight two says, dragons, no such thing. Let's all go home and tell the king. Just as I thought, says small knight three, there's nothing here to frighten me. The dragon's just in the king's head. Good night, good nights, let's get to bed. There is no dragon taking wing. The king is safe. Long live the king. Dragons Love Tacos by Adam Rubin, read with permission from Penguin Random House. Hey, kid! Did you know that dragons love tacos? They love beef tacos and chicken tacos. They love really big, gigantic tacos and tiny little baby tacos as well. Why do dragons love tacos? Maybe it's the smell from the sizzling pan. Maybe it's the crunch of the crispy tortillas. Maybe it's a secret. Either way, if you want to make friends with dragons, tacos are key. Hey dragon, why do you guys love tacos so much? But wait, as much as dragons love tacos, they hate spicy salsa even more. They hate spicy green salsa and spicy red salsa. They hate spicy chunky salsa and spicy smooth salsa. If the salsa is spicy at all, dragons can't stand it. Why do dragons hate spicy salsa? Well, just one drop of hot sauce makes a dragon's ears smoke. Just one single speck of hot pepper makes a dragon snort sparks. Spicy salsa gives dragons the tummy troubles, and when dragons get the tummy troubles, Oh boy. If you want to make tacos for dragons, keep the toppings mild. Tomatoes, check. Lettuce, check. Cheese, check. These are all good toppings for tacos for dragons. Hey dragon, how do you feel about spicy taco toppings? Dragons love parties. They like costume parties and pool parties. They like big gigantic parties with accordions and tiny little parties with charades. Why do dragons love parties? Maybe it's the conversation. Maybe it's the dancing. Maybe it's the comforting sound of a good friend's laughter. The only thing dragons love more than parties or tacos is taco parties. Taco parties are parties with lots of tacos. If you want to have some dragons over for a taco party, you'll need buckets of tacos, pants loads of tacos. The best way to judge is to get a boat and fill the boat with tacos. That's about how many tacos dragons need for a taco party. After all, dragons love tacos. Hey dragon, are you excited for the big taco party? Just remember, Dragons hate spicy salsa. Before you host your taco party with dragons, get rid of all the spicy salsa. In fact, bury the spicy salsa in the backyard so the dragons can't find it. These dragons love your taco party. They love the music, they love the decorations, 
They especially love the tacos. Congratulations. It's a good thing you got rid of all that spicy. Wait a second. What are those little green things in the salsa? You didn't read the fine print? Totally mild salsa. Now with spicy jalapeno peppers. Dragons, listen to me. Do not eat those tacos. Those little green specks in the salsa, those are jalapeno peppers. They are super spicy. I know you love tacos, dragons, but you are not gonna love those tacos. Do not let those dragons eat those tacos. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Why would dragons help you rebuild your house? Maybe they're good Samaritans. Maybe they feel bad for wrecking it. Maybe they're just in it for the taco breaks. After all, dragons love tacos. Dragons Love Tacos by Adam Rubin. Be sure to visit the library to pick up this week's take home story time craft.